What's going on, everybody? So, there's been a lot of news going on with newer handhelds like Ion Neo's Many, Many Children, the MSI Claw, the Legion Go. All these handhelds are surfacing, but there is one factor of the RG Ally that people just keep bringing up every single time they see these new handhelds surface, and that is VRR. And I just wanted to go over exactly the importance of VRR on the ROG Ally and how it's helped me play the impossible games with a smooth frame rate. Now, a lot of people don't know what VRR means. It pretty much means variable refresh rate, and that's exactly as it sounds. There are numerous refresh rates that a game can go through to eventually reach a smooth middle ground. And with variable refresh rate, the ROG Ally can consistently go from one refresh rate to another without having to risk frame rate drops or even screen tearing. So that means you can turn off VSync and get even less input delay with no tearing because naturally the ROG Ally takes care of that and smooths out the frames and fluctuates from refresh rate to refresh rate in order to match up those two sides vertically of your gameplay to sync up the screen like VSync would. And this method works exceptionally well for titles like Resident Evil 7, if you want to play it with its normal rendering mode, games like Resident Evil 4 Remake, which I'm playing right now, and even though it has some stutters like with the Steam Deck, I can still play the game at high settings, pretty much 90% of the settings are set to high at 1080p, and just playing these exceptional titles that require a lot of graphical power sometimes can result in frame drops. If you play on other devices like even the Steam Deck, you'll see a lot of frame drops in games like Starfield. But if you play Starfield on the ROG Ally, since it is variable refresh rate, even if you do go down to the mid-20s if you have it at 1080p, VRR will most likely, most of the time, smooth out those frames so everything feels a lot more responsive and just basically smoother. But the main reason I wanted to make this video is just to point out that I believe every handheld should have VRR. It doesn't really take away anything from the battery or experience or even the quality. It doesn't have a large input delay like FSR 3 does right now, but they are going to implement FSR 3 officially into the ROG Ally, so hopefully the input delay will be supplemented by VRR as well. But all in all, VRR to me is one of the most impressive features of the ROG Ally. And you can really tell the difference after you dock the system that VRR takes care of most of the hard work. I can just put a game like Resident Evil 4 Remake to any setting I please and not have to worry about it thanks to VRR. Playing Resident Evil 4 Remake on the go has never been better with variable refresh rate. And I'm not sure why other handhelds just don't do it and why people don't think it's a big deal because honestly, with first person shooters, that's a huge deal to me. With any other game, you will see screen tearing and frame drops with first person shooters because all you're doing essentially is moving the camera constantly, which we're reveals more of the game at all times. That's why first-person shooters are the most taxing games you can play on a handheld especially. But variable refresh rate definitely helps with this fact, especially with titles like Doom Eternal. I've had such an amazing time specifically playing Doom Eternal handheld. When it comes to docked, you start seeing some of the frame drops, especially if you have the game in ultra settings and 1080p, unfortunately. With modern handheld PCs, Doom Eternal is still struggling in some ways. But of course, if you put dynamic resolution, you should be fine. But I hate putting dynamic resolution because I want to see all of those details that the game has to offer. And in handheld mode, VRR helps with that exponentially. The first time I used the ROG Ally, I didn't know why the hell I can put Doom Eternal into 1080p ultra settings with the frame rate seeming just as smooth as it would be with medium or 720p resolution and settings. But of course, it's all because of variable refresh rate. It smooths out all the frames and makes it a lot more bearable to play high-end titles like Doom Eternal. And of course, Doom Eternal is optimized very well, so we can move on to a different game that isn't optimized very well, and that is the Callisto Protocol. I have beaten this title on the RG Ally, and it does have its stutters here and there when you go from location to location, but because of the VRR, it definitely smooths out a lot of those moments where it's still loading, or if there are a lot of enemies on the screen. Because I play this game at high settings, 1080p, I really don't care about settings. I don't really optimize it that much. I want to see as much detail as I possibly can in my handheld titles because I have the right. I bought a $700 handheld PC to give me that extra power. So if I want to play 
the Callisto Protocol at 1080p high settings, then I damn well should be able to do that. And VRR gives me that right. VRR has proven to be an essential part of the RG Ally, and I hope they go even further with RG Ally 2 this year. Hopefully it comes out this year, because I can't wait to see what Asus comes up with next with VRR. Maybe they'll have something like VRR 2 that they have specifically optimized for the RG Ally. That would be even better because Asus mentioned that game features are going to be the focus with the RG Ally 2. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but VRR might be one of those features that they refine even more to play their games even better on the go. I think this is a notable exception and deal breaker when it comes to handhelds. I think if a new handheld like the MSI Claw comes out and it doesn't support VRR, that is a big deal to me, at least. I think every handheld PC should support VRR because it has proven to be quite the juggernaut when it comes to keeping a frame rate steady. And with games like Resident Evil 7 and Village, VRR helps a great deal. I honestly think that Resident Evil Village on the Steam Deck is kind of unplayable because of all the stutters and frame drops that it has. But playing with the same exact settings, with even higher settings at 1080p, on the go at 15 watts, Resident Evil Village with VRR provides a very smooth experience. And I was so surprised at how well it plays on the RNG Ally. I still can't believe it. And it's just such a good time to be a handheld gamer. I've been looking forward to these days since I was a kid and they're finally here and VRR and the RG Ally helps a great deal with that experience in total. To me, it's an essential feature for any handheld device and if it doesn't have it, I don't wanna play it. A lot of people say that you can't really tell that a game drops in frames, but I'm assuming with the Legion Go, you can kind of tell when it drops in frames because of that huge eight inch screen. And of course, with the RG Ally screen, it's a seven inch, and when you have V-Sync turned on, you can sort of tell that the frame rate is dipping and stuttering here and there, but when you turn it off, you can't really tell because V-Sync provides that experience for you that you can see everything running in a single frame simultaneously to look as smooth as possible. But VRR pretty much acts like a universal V-Sync for all games without V-Sync turned on. So you can experience those screen tears without the screen tears. But most importantly, since it does have a variable refresh rate it can go from say 34 hertz to 40 hertz without a hitch and it'll make you feel like you are at 40 hertz the whole time but of course with these other handhelds you're going to have to manually change the refresh rate yourself in order to get the best minimum so that you don't go higher or lower than it with as little dips as possible but of course there will always be those segments and situations in a game that provide those dips because there are too many enemies on the screen or it's just the climax of the game and the most is happening at the moment. But with those high points in these AAA titles, on the ROG Ally specifically, you most likely won't be able to tell the difference between those frame drops with those high octane climax moments in the titles, or even a simple empty room that serves no purpose. Of course, the frames will be notably higher in those empty rooms, but the smoothness of gameplay will be consistent through and through. And I just wanted to make a point of the importance of VRR with the ROG Ally and how it provides a higher level of gameplay consistency, especially while playing handheld. And if you have a VRR capable monitor, you can use that as well because I have the ASUS Strix monitor, which has variable refresh rate, and it provides close to the same experience that I get on the ROG Ally. But in my opinion, the ROG Ally does have a more exceptional experience in terms of VRR than with my monitor. But yeah, let me know how you guys are enjoying VRR on your ROG Ally. Do you think it is as essential as I make it out to be? Or are you with the other people that believe you don't need VRR with handheld devices? Either way, leave a comment about what you think. And I hope you guys have a good one. Later.